Right, let's, let's get pumped up. Pumped up for Transtastic. Mr. Bombastic, tell the Transtastic. Hi guys, it's Presley and... Shut up. When somebody starts a text message with shit, you really want to read that, but then again, you don't want to procrastinate because you know what's going to happen if you start procrastinating and you're supposed to make this video now. So, okay, let's just do it. Hi guys, it's Presley and this week's topic is how to choose a surgeon. The only surgery that I'm really interested in, for me personally, is top surgery. So that's what I'm going to talk about. You know, we all have our individual ways of figuring out problems or like solving stuff in our lives, figuring out what we want when doing anything really important, um, especially something as important and permanent as surgery. Some things that I think are important to consider are, uh, first of all, you need to think about what method of top surgery you want. Do you want double incision? Do you want keyhole? Um, what do you want and what can you get? And of course, how much money are you willing and able to spend on this surgery? Also, how far are you willing to travel for this surgery? And last but not least, how long are you willing to wait? Those are some things that you can gather together, write down and... or just think about in your head if you prefer that. And you can make up a, a sort of plan for what you want. And then you can base your research off of that. I think it's really important to remember that you need to research, you need to talk to other people who have done the surgery that you want to do, especially if you're able to talk with people who've done uh, the surgery with the surgeon that you're interested in, that's really good. And then you need to think for yourself about what you want and what you can and you know, all that kind of stuff. And then I think you also need to feel. You need to... Everyone has some level of intuition. Everyone has some level of feeling towards uh, another person when they meet them. And I feel like, um, obviously your surgeon needs to be a good surgeon, logically. They, they need to be good, preferably they're used to doing this kind of surgery. But you also, on some level, I mean, you don't need to be best friends with your surgeon, but you can't be like, you can barely be in the same room as them. You need to have some level of personal trust in the surgeon. Not just logical thought trust, you need to be able to have a feeling of trust on some level towards the surgeon. You shouldn't feel uneasy when you're interacting with them. Those are some things that I think are really important when making big decisions in life. Research, talking, thinking, feeling, and also making up a plan and, and making it clear in your head what it is that you want and what it is that you are able to get. And for me personally, this is something I've been thinking about recently because I had a top surgery consultation not long ago in a city very near where I live and I talked to this surgeon who would be doing my top surgery privately if I went to him. Because uh, in Sweden you can also get it done through the gender clinic, you know, thing. I don't know what it's called in English, but you know, they hook you up with a surgeon, you don't have to pay for it. It's absolutely wonderful. But also, there aren't a lot of results able to to be seen online and it's hard to, to know what it's gonna look like and I've heard people say that it's good and I've heard people say that it's not so good I've heard people say it's better to do it privately so I'm just Ugh. I booked this consultation when I worked full-time uh, when I realized that if I worked full-time uh, I would by the end of the year be able to actually afford top surgery but uh, I've since then I, I couldn't work full-time anymore because of my anxiety so I went down to three days a week of work and now I can't pay for top surgery anymore even with the part-time payment plan that they had at the clinic I went to so blah 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 anyway I went to the consultation because I was curious so I went there I really liked the surgeon um, he wasn't that used to doing top surgery compared to like surgeons in America and stuff but he was nice he seemed to have been thinking about what it's like to be trans. He was respectful. He told me, he gave me so much information about the method he would use. He talked about a method he would use and I loved it. I really want, I really wanted to, to have that surgery, um, but I'm not gonna be able to pay for it. So I've decided that instead of waiting for years and years and years, I'm and trying to save up and having to, having to forego 
traveling and, and other stuff that I want to do, I'm just going to, whenever I get it from, from the gender clinic, uh, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to take the, the free stuff, you know, and I feel so blessed and so fortunate to be able to have that, to, to have that choice, you know, to, to know that even if I can't pay for it myself, I will be able to get soft top surgery. That's a really good thing about transitioning in Sweden, that you know that you're gonna be able to get the surgery. So I feel incredibly, incredibly fortunate to be in this situation. I've, I'm so glad, actually. I, I can, I don't even wanna think about what it would be like if I didn't have that option. So I'm really, really, really happy that that exists, but it bothers me that there aren't a lot of results to be seen online. I think I've seen like, four guys. I haven't seen any horrible results. I've seen especially one that was really, looked really, really nice. You know, you gotta make your own personal decisions and listen to other people's stories, but also make your own decision based on your own personal subjective experience and feelings. Uh, and be smart about your decisions. Best of luck to all of you, and I hope you've, you're having a great week, and I hope you have a great next week as well. I'll see you next time. Bye.